What's up, y'all? Another quick one. <laughs> quick one. Long one. I don't know. I'm going to try and not do three hours tonight, but uh, it's too enticing. This is a 2X um, on the 11. Checking out Saturn rising above the moon. Time is 11.44 p.m. Eastern. June 1st. Just want to hop on and say what's up to everyone in the chat room. Uh, the tracking tonight, I don't know, it's just being a little finicky, so I'm having a tough time to kind of keep it centered, so I'm focused there. What's up, Abu Is? What's up, A Lunatic Vision? Rouse? Um, Emily Slaughter, Duplicate? What's going on? Even and even. Getting some really nice outer band um, separation. You can see the outer ring and definitely some nice surface detail on Saturn. Lots of noise, I know. There's lots of light coming from the moon, probably from underneath. rises is getting a little bit clearer, which is sweet. Moon is about 10 minutes away from being seen. Jump over to that when I can. Now we're gonna rest on Saturn. I'm gonna kind of keep it to a minimum of talking tonight, just hang out a little bit. Tomorrow, I think, uh, if it's clear, I wanna try and stream. The Moon and Mars are coming up together around this time. You guys can, I can't show it from here, but Jupiter is in the, the southern skies right now looking mighty nice. I did take a really killer shot um, after the stream last night at like 3 in the morning. Went to the back porch and just hung out, watched uh, the whole sky kind of move across. And then what was super cool is that Jupiter was in the west. It's right after the stream, so Mars was in the east. And the moon was almost due south you know, with Saturn right next to it, like it was. And so I set up the fisheye camera, and I was able to capture all of them. Uh, so Mars all the way to the left, Jupiter all the way to the right, and then in the middle. A really lucky shot where, honestly, if Mars or Jupiter were a few arc seconds off, that you wouldn't be able to capture it in frame. So had a really cool night with the back door, back porch spider. Back door spider. even up yet, um, hasn't even come above the horizon. The moon is almost at like 10 degrees on the ecliptic. space. <laughs> it would be cool to have a dating app that was all about like space fanatics. It would just be for 30 or 50 of you guys. <laughs> Alright, some nice ring separation. It's getting clearer too. I love it. You can even see the back shadow. to hit. Um, Jupiter is in the south. It's way past my window view at this point, so unfortunately I can't, I can't swing to Jupiter. We got Saturn and then the Moon and then Mars coming up.
Uh, BRB guys, gonna go have a quick SIG. Keep this Saturn centered. Time's 11.51. What's up, Awake? How you doing? Probably back in a few minutes. Settle in for the ride. So this track is called Gotta Change It Up.
Does it move around? Um, does it move around like that? Uh, I just want to get clarification on what you meant. You mean Saturn? And if you think it, uh, if you get, it seems like it's moving, but it's um, it really is probably just the noise and the atmospherics that make it look like it's moving. Although it's kind of tough to tell. It seems like a little bit of haze is moving in as well. it's important to note um, the idea of the Big Bang Theory and uh, who came up with that and how it was actually established is really important. It's bandied about nowadays as like pure settled science, but it really doesn't make sense actually in the grand scheme of things. It violates many laws of physics as we know them in terms of observational science and uh, the idea that you can just, from an Earth-centric and time-centric perspective such as now, uh, with very with great conviction say that it, you know 13.7 however many billion years ago you know from absolutely nothing came everything and it happened everywhere and it just seems so magical and it always has bothered me in, in terms of how confident people sound when they say it and so for me it seems a lot more uh, holistic and honest to just admit that we don't really know how the universe started I'm not trying to judge anybody, but for me, it's just really hard to kind of just say Big Bang and all these ages and just be completely confident with them. Damn, I think we got some clouds in. I'm going to switch to the wide, uh, wide lens at this point. That was some good Saturn. And uh, yeah, let's switch it over.
What's up there, Reg Roberts? I remember you. What's going on, man? Thanks for stopping by. Abrez says, does Big Bang oppose faith in God? Well, no, actually, what I was trying to say earlier is that you, we, we kind of just take it for granted, but uh, the Big Bang was uh, postulated by Georges Lemaitre, who was a priest, and um, he gave a lecture on it, I want to say in Vienna, maybe, where Einstein was, and Einstein came up after this, uh, this kind of briefing, and he, where he proposed this idea of the Big Bang creation ex nihilo. So ev from everything, come from, from nothing, everything. And uh, so Einstein kind of corroborated this with, because he was at the time, he was very famous at the time. He came up and kind of backed up George Lemaitre on the Big Bang Theory. However, a lot of scientists at the time even considered it kind of incorrect in terms of fundamental thermodynamics. And so, I don't know, we got down this rabbit, this route where Newtonian and relativity has just taken over, but there are definitely some other theories out there. The idea that just uh, things appeared out of nowhere and uh, they have to create all these multi, uh, you know, the multiverse in order to accommodate it. You have to create multiple big bangs. You have to create dark matter and dark energy and spooky this and spooky action at a distance and, and all these different theories that really we don't have observational science for. It's all mathematical. Uh, language and deterministic uh, formulas, but you know, math is just a language to to, to, to kind of help us explain what we see, and not the other way around. to kind of have like a separation between spirituality and uh, agnostic agnosticism or agnosticism i think it all kind of falls under the same category but partially i feel like why we're so misguided at this point is because of the compartmentalization of everything people don't speak to one another within disciplines <clears throat> and you know chemists don't talk to physicians and astrophysics don't talk to philosophers anymore and so i think that's actually what's lacking the collaboration Therefore, I don't really want to take sides necessarily. There's a fundamental question as to, you know, how old things are and where things are. But if you look at it from the perspective of all we really know is our current, you know, 100 years or so, or 200 years really, of recorded history and astronomy. And so this idea that we definitely know what happened 13 billion years ago is just, I think, um, extremely arrogant. even if math says you can do it. So there's the moon coming up behind the trees. Got the focal reducer in there. topic of Saturn, the idea that Saturn is young makes sense, the idea that, you know, um, actually I would just encourage people to type in Electric Universe Saturn and take a look at what they postulate, you know, uh, Belikovsky was talking about Saturn not having rings, being a proto-round dwarf that possibly housed Mars and, Mars and Earth, you know, maybe 10,000 years ago, and something happened and created this massive, uh, you know, what is like billiard balls kind of smashing against one another via the electromagnetic force moving things drastically in our solar system and then saturn or, I, I don't know I, i'm kind of just reiterating what i've seen and what i've heard them talk about but it's really interesting to think that within our solar system things could have been different you know 10,000, 20,000, 50,000. it could be cyclical it could be singular events but uh it would beg the question to think that whether, you know, gravity has always been the same on Earth, or nitrogen, or density, or half-lives. That's really questionable to think that right now, because we can measure half-lives of plutonium or, or uranium half-lives, 
uh, calcium uh, dating, you know, uh, calcium and potassium dating right now has a, a certain type of half-life, given that we have nitrogen in the atmosphere at a certain level, given that there's a certain type of electromagnetic uh, charge to Earth and a frequency, and likely ionization of water that would probably have some effect on gravity and consciousness, probably. I mean, no, not probably. I believe that maybe um, the ionic energy of space actually affects consciousness. Similarly with uh, solar radiation, lunar interaction, and, and it makes me wonder like what consciousness is actually like outside of the magnetosphere of Earth. So anyway, I kind of encourage people to just, even if, if you're really curious about Saturn, Emmanuel Velikovsky, Worlds in Collision, um, and Thunderbolts Project uh, YouTube channel, I link to it in the description. They have some really great ideas about Saturn that you can accommodate and kind of mix and match and, and think about things in a different way. Why the echo, echo, echo? I think because I was singing the other night and I didn't lower the reverb. Uh, I shall do that. How's it now? I feel like it might be better. Of course, your name's biggest complainer. <laughs> good, good first complaint. Welcome to the channel. Alright, so the moon is bright. I'm gonna go and set the exposure. Let's take a look. what is today as a result of billions of years. Um, I think I kind of wholeheartedly disagree, but uh, you're free to have your opinion. <laughs> I don't know, I think it's really hard to say, you know. It's hard to say. Luna's coming up all nice, uh, still behind the tree branch, that's what the shadow is. Looks like we're gonna have the ni nice sharpness like we did yesterday. And the reason I say it's not 14 billion years old is simply because the idea that it is that old is because the concept of modern cosmology needs all the, uh, you know, needs a lot of time for these formations to happen. But in the plasma universe and electricity and electromagnetic force being the strong, strongest and dominant force, um, ideas like things like galaxies, uh, quasars, nebula, planets, stars, erosion features, cratering, all of that can happen in tiny fractions of the time that is postulated today that takes billions of years. Therefore. The idea of billions of years was extrapolated from the necessity to explain what we see. But that interpretation of what we see is actually fundamentally incorrect. Bing, 
would sound a lot more important with reverb. <laughs> yeah, I like the reverb on the voice, it just gives it kind of that atmosphere. I'll keep it, I'll keep it moderate. up it kind of has this cloud trail that follows it so I'm gonna stick around with this wide shot for a bit when it gets clear we'll do some zoom zoomed in shots let me check the illumination so the moon's at 88.2 percent illuminated waning gibbous at 23 degrees in, on the ecliptic and Mars actually just peaked over the horizon so that's maybe I don't know, 30 minutes away, hopefully. I'd love to get a shot of Mars before closing out the stream. Reginald says, love the way you think, friend. Glad to see you're still putting out high quality work here. Yeah, that means a lot, thank you. I, I wanna say I try, but I think I'm just doing it as uh, far as well as I can at the moment. I'm trying to keep it all together for myself and you know, share what I believe is something that I ver am very lucky to have, which is the time and the, you know, I guess the money to kind of spend on these, uh, this hobby. Or many consider a hobby what I consider extremely important. But, uh, yeah, so thank you. Glad you're enjoying it. And if I'm ever in, in Georgia, right? Yeah, lunch is on me. All right, I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Yeah, I had a blast of my waffles too, Ellie. No more waffles here. I did have a lot of broccoli for dinner. I had like a whole head of broccoli. It was really good. I kind of like chopped it up, even the stalks, and like put uh, balsamic vinegar and ground pepper and some really nice olive oil, and then kind of at 500 degrees, bro broiled that in the oven. It's like lots of broccoli. I kind of want to go on an all broccoli diet for a moment <laughs> and see what happens to my brain. Justin Lee says, you gain electrostatic energy by walking more than 10 minutes, it's healing. Yeah, I mean, we're on this, you know, whatever you consider Earth, this planet, this consciousness, but we're not separate from it. Um, and we're, we're always kind of led to believe that we're different from Earth and we're destroying Earth and we can leave Earth, but really you're part of it. Or I feel like I'm part of it. I always try and like measure my language. I don't want to judge and decide anybody's, uh, or lead anybody into some sort of thinking. This is all just my, it's my world, my space. <laughs> it's definitely not my space. It's our space. Um, this is Chrome Fantastic. I'm trying to play some songs I haven't played the last over the past week. All right, nice. Got some clarity on the moon. Got some low noise settings at ISO 100.
sub rises a spacecraft faster than light through which we can cut light years and travel through galaxies. Yeah, so, um, and then I think, Justin, you took the words out of my mouth. Light does not travel. Yes, I mean, that's a new theory, or it's an old theory, but it's a new understanding about light that I think makes a lot more sense than this idea that light is in these little photon packets. It sounds like really clever, but it makes a lot more sense that we live in, a, in an etheric consciousness field, and light is a field perturbation that we experience. And therefore, the speed of light is this arbitrary measurement that we've placed upon light as we know it, since we don't really understand it. Therefore, you don't need spacecraft to travel faster than anything to reach anywhere. I think fundamentally, we have to understand like where we are in the universe and how we perceive things to even consider this idea of light speed or the idea of putting limitations on a universe that in and of itself is, seems infinite. Yo, what's up, Dr. Ayad Hassan? How you doing? Hello, human being on the third rock. <laughs> yep. Oh, not interrupting. Yeah, just, I'm just talking, just... I don't know, like, I've been watching all these videos, man, it's so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. Some of the stuff that, like, I used to, I used to believe for a lot of years, like, I studied, um, you know, astronomy just as heavily as I do now, but from the context of uh, just relativity and, you know, taking Hawking and Einstein as idols and Neil deGrasse and all this stuff. I thought these guys were amazing. Uh, and now I know better for myself. And I'm trying to just show some visuals that corroborate what I'm actually thinking, which is we're looking at a, a scarred surface of an object. And this object, uh, while we have a lot of information about it and it's possible that, you know, men walked on there, the robots, robot, robots, Mr. Robot. Uh, yeah, robot. What was I saying? Yeah, so there are robots on the moon taking pictures, but what we really see from Earth is, is these patterns that don't look like impact craters, and they do look like electric arcing. Or at least, as far as we know right now, there could be another explanation that is not, uh, not uh, revealed. I'm trying to find a quick song to put in the background. Let's see, this one's good. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, elect uh, Thunderbolts Project, the channel just put out something about electrical scarification and the idea of Valles Marineris on Mars, this massive structure that has uh, either, like, we just don't really know where the, where the rock went when it was blasted out, if it was this, you know, it doesn't seem like an impact could cause this massive, massive feature like Valles Marineris just on a certain one impact. It doesn't seem like there's a volcano or surface feature that we know of as humans that could cause a surface feature that large. And I'm just kind of, I don't like to say distances and, uh, sizes very much. I, I'm hesitant to just say that like it's like it's common knowledge or settled science, but if you go look at Mars and you believe the size that Mars is in diameter, you realize that Valles Marineris had to be created by some sort of uh, event that we have not seen necessarily, but can replicate in the laboratory using electrical arcing. So the idea that it just happened is ridiculous to me. The idea that somebody did a laboratory experiment that looks like what we're seeing makes a little more sense. <laughs> Dr. Ayad Hassan says, uh, heard of the cosmic internet. Isn't that just, uh, <laughs> you know, is that consciousness? in the World Wide Web, the network of filaments inside this etheric field modality. I mean, you know, there could be multiverses. There might have been a Big Bang, but it's, it's nice to keep it, you know, open to debate because otherwise there's, this is not science. It's just, it's idolatry. And that's not something that I'm really interested in. And fundamentally, philosophy has really been, you know, extricated from science, which is really sad because, you know, nat you know natural philosophy really is very
very impactful and can help science and astronomy and astrophysics. And similarly with chemistry and biology, bringing that into, physical, into physics and physics experiments. And also not making fun of stuff like you know, telekinesis or telepathy, um, given that there are a lot of examples of this etheric field, or uh, what do they call it? Um, the morphic, morphic resonance. I think Rupert Sheldrake, who used to hang out with Terence McKenna a lot, uh, talked about this, and he did a lot of the, all these experiments where he proved that there is a statistical anomaly where people could really actually were telekinetic in some way. And I think, given that we live in this life and you have to really skill up on a lot of things, you can't just pick up a guitar and play. You have to spend a long time before you can actually play anything well. It seems to me that things like telekinesis and telepathy might be possible with a lot of practice. So, I think it's very important not to be condescending towards people, no matter what their beliefs. That's, that's above all for me, that's what uh, makes the internet kind of toxic nowadays is because it's preemptive antagonism towards everybody. Everybody's super defensive about what they believe in and they don't want to change their minds no matter what. Simply what I see is because of ego or maybe just misunderstanding or just mostly, you know, antagonism is, is, is lauded in this culture and it's really sad because it doesn't fit into the model of science that makes sense. Science needs collaboration, patience, and uh, above all, politeness among people to not lose their tempers and to kind of think about things. It, you know, there are no projects that happen in art or music, really, when you're fighting. So this idea that you can get online, get on YouTube and shit talk people about science, you're not getting anywhere. Kelly Wynn says, it's like martial arts without spirituality. Rain Song, what's going on? It says, seems so long since we walked in the moonlight. Emily says, nice view. She's pretty tonight, for sure. I had the contrast turned up a little bit. It's kind of getting that nice color from the, from the Mari. Justin Lee says, video called Colossal Ancient Earthworks. In America shows similar features on Mars. Yeah, I, I saw a comment somewhere on Electric Universe where people were like, why is the Earth pockmarked like the Moon and Mars? But it likely is. It's just that Earth has the ability to produce fauna and has oceans, so therefore, you know, lots of ge uh, geographical features are covered by, by uh, flora and animals and people. You can't really see it as clearly as you can, like a dust planet, like Mars, for example, or even the moon that it looks like it, there's, there are metals in the rock. And also, it kind of looks, I don't know, kind of looks sandy, but who knows? It feels like it's really just really solid in certain areas, and then the kind of Mari are smooth. And then you'd think that in the Mari, like, or Maria, I guess is the plural Mari, Get back to the chat for a second. My brother says, I will change my religion. And Hassan says, so dangerous, they've put in, they put in jail since seven years. Science of forgetting about science, I'm sorry, science of forgetting about science love. Science forgetting about science love. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, I, I don't think people have seen massive electrical discharge create craters, but I also, I don't think people have also seen, you know, a billion years of erosion happen. So it's, it's, I think it's a debatable topic. You know, I'm sure the, the, that people will probably think about the ice samples that they take in the, in the cat, in the polar regions of Earth where they take these kind of long tubes and they go down, I don't know, what is it, like 200 meters, 300 meters into the earth and take these samples of the ice layers and they'll point to these layers and tell you this is how old the earth is and this is what happened at this period, etc, etc. However, what's not taken into account is the fact that massive electrical discharge could likely create these features at a much faster rate than we know. And so if you never even question the fact that 
that could be the case, then you're always going to go back and start measuring these things with preconceived notions. Therefore, it's not really science because it turns into belief at that point. Albert says, why does the moon only face one side? I don't know for sure, but I'm starting to think, you know, and if, uh, if the far side of the moon photos from the, the I want to say, the Soviets and the Americans both had craft go around the, the back side of the moon and take these photos that are really incredible, um, but they look very different than the front side that faces us. Therefore, I feel like there's probably some sort of I guess, tendency for the side that's, that constantly faces us to have some sort of more of a magnetic pull, I guess. It could be that the, the now, now I'm fumbling for words, but the maria, the, the mare, are, full, are filled with a type of material that makes it kind of be more drawn to earth on this side than it is on the other side. So maybe more titanium or more metals, or maybe a certain type of charge frequency that creates this sort of attraction that keeps it in this libration where it's tilting, you know. And it shows us its surface about, what is it, like 60% of the surface of the moon is shown to us because it, it kind of wobbles on, the, on its, as it goes around. I'm gonna take a little break, have a quick smoke, and then I'll, let's, I'll do a little zoomed in tour while I have a smoke and you guys can watch the moon, talk amongst yourselves. Hey, Dan, it's a full chat room. What's up, everybody just joining? Time is 12.31 a.m. Talking about the electric universe, watching the moon. Had some Saturn earlier, really decent views of Saturn. If you guys wanna check it out, um, jump back or like check the stream out tomorrow. I'm gonna try and end the show in like, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes and maybe catch the last, uh, the last shot will be Mars. Dr. Ayad says, new Chinese mission launched last week in attempt to photograph the other side, I guess, of the moon. Yeah, I'm, I'm always checking those pictures and kind of researching that, so I'm curious. Dupacat says, also ice core samples are not like tree rings. Multiple winter storms can produce multiple layers and ice snow samples in just one year. You know, I wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me, uh, that's kind of a pun, but it wouldn't shock me if tree rings, uh, similarly, depending on uh, nitrogen in the atmosphere, uh, etheric density, which would change, you know, charge in the atmosphere, change gravity, uh, that trees of a certain age where they call them, you know, 10,000 year old trees, maybe these rings were formed, you know, two, three, four rings at a time instead of one per year. And even then, uh, the old, the, the number, the, what was it? The maximum number of rings in a tree trunk ever counted was something like 10,000. And even that blows my mind because who's sitting there like actually counting 10,000 little lines? Maybe it was done by, by a computer or a scanner or something like that. Anyway, 10,000 is not a billion and it's not 600 million. So this extrapolation idea is very, uh, you know, I think I want to say it's human and earth centric and we're applying this this time zone right now that we live in and where Earth is in the solar system right now, two things that were happening a long time ago. It just doesn't make sense to say, yes, definitely that's how it was because it is like that now. And uh, just because Earth is a certain way with gravity and electromagnetism, therefore Saturn is the same way or the moon is the same way. It just, I, I never understood what, why that was the case, but now I do and it makes a lot more sense to say, you know, it's, it's something that we can talk about. All right, time to do some space. I'm gonna shut my hole. There's a track called Do Everything. All right, last, last note. <clears throat> Your guy says, funny, but weird, weirdly enough, weird guy says I was pondering the source of gravity just before the stream started so this idea that gravity just is uh, and it's related to the mass and the size of a planet you know 
the idea that it's an etheric field and there's some sort of electrical nature to it, and depending on the density of the of what uh, medium you're in, that would affect what the gravity is. Because cl clearly, they talk about even in public science that there are, uh, you know every planet has different gravity, right? But they never explain why there's different gravity. They're like the size of this is it's pulling from the center, the core of the planet, because of, yeah, but. If a, if a charge in the atmosphere and a charge in space actually can determine what gravity is per each object in the, in the celestial system, then that to me makes a little bit more sense and that can get us somewhere. But really, you ask a scientist what gravity actually is and they won't, they won't really give you an answer, they'll give you a measurement. Anyway, that's it. Little break.
Hey y'all. All right, so got a couple of happier tracks going on in the background. I'm trying to play you guys some stuff to surprise you. Old uh, B cuts that I never really played. Searched up the lens. Got the camera direct to the 11 inch right now. Moon's looking quite nice, real sharp. Got the contrast turned low. Panning around the north side, got Mari Imbrium, Mar uh, Sea of Serenity, Sea of Tranquility, Mari Serenitatis, Tranquillitatis are the three Maris that you see. At the very top is Mari Frigoris, the little crater to the left, the dark one above Mari Imbrium, Plato. This one's called Broken Toy Box. Guitar jams. I'm excited so it sounds like the Toadies. I think I know the Toadies, is that 90s band? Coming through now the Aristarchus, Copernicus, Kepler triangle.
Mysteries Sharks fan, how you doing? Uh, what's going on? I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, and Hassan says, what's with the fluid like behind a jet engine hot thrust? So I think it's uh, partly because, you know, I'm viewing it over Tampa Bay, and I think the water and the humidity in the atmosphere creates what looks like, you know, water ripples in a way in the atmosphere. And of course, the density is different, therefore, you kind of looks like wind turbines kind of pushing. That's really what that liquidy thing is. I feel like in desert skies it would be a little bit different, but it's so, so wet and so humid. Uh, yeah, that being said, it is quite crispy considering. Got this wide shot looking real nice. It's always great when you can kind of reduce the ISO all the way down so it has a very little signal to noise. No, a lot more signal to noise, sorry. Less noise. Speaking of images on the moon, I see one that looks like the statue of a man laying down with his back upright at Chichen Itza. I haven't been there before, but I, I, th I think I've seen pictures of Chichen Itza. It's amazing. And uh, I don't know if you guys know Puma Punku as well. It's actually quite interesting with the like rocks excised, these perfect cube rocks that look like laser cuts. And Hassan says, did you know moonlight is cold? I've heard that. I'm not certain of how to interpret that necessarily. Also lately I've been kind of thinking about, you know, how electricity could actually affect heat or the idea of what heat is, uh, black body radiation, and of course, you know, what, what the concept of cold really is and how, that, how our consciousness interprets cold and hot. So I don't know if the moonlight is cold. I, I do know that it is putrefying. It's different than, than sunlight, or at least it takes sunlight and kind of converts it via reflecting it off this... Uh, I want to believe, you know, I want to believe, but I think that, uh, that the moon has some sort of atmosphere to it. There must be some sort of gaseous medium that kind of converts the light and allows us to see the moon in certain ways. That's what the glinting is. This is complete speculation on my part, but I, I think that the moon has some sort of atmosphere, and therefore, kind of when it reflects sunlight, it, it almost transmogrifies the sunlight and turns it into a, a different type of light that reaches us. And kind of, it also could be the fact that at night you only get the moonlight and not any sunlight. Therefore, a different type of electromagnetic reaction happens when, you're, when you don't have sunlight around. And Hassan, um, I, I will, honestly, I've, I've seen that experiment before, but after watching Sky Scholar, uh, Dr. Pierre-Marie Robitaille talking about black body radiation and Kirchhoff's law, I've started to reconsider the idea that you can really gauge that um, through the atmosphere and actually have a proper determination of the temperature of moonlight, given our primitive experiments. And some people uh, think that you know, they can do that and, and determine proper results, you know, that's fine. It doesn't change things for me. I, I'm not sure. I've actually done that experiment, you know, a couple of years ago, and it was very hard to gauge whether, you know, whether it was the moonlight causing it or whether it was atmospheric uh, temperature. And Hassan says, it's in our historical text, it's measurable. All right, that's fair. Um, I can't say that I really uh, know how to do that properly, but if you have an experiment that shows 
Moonlight being cold. Uh, I'd like to see it, that would be fine. Drop me a link or drop me a message. I'm always open to it. check out Mars shortly. We're going on some really beautiful moon footage right here of the track. A line in the sand is playing in the background. It's having good, good chat with good people. Enjoyable Saturday night. some Aristarchus zoom shot right here. Another night in a row that we can see the inside of Aristarchus crater, the hot white crater. And then underneath that is Schroeder's Valley, Valles Schroeder, 
the scrotary. <laughs> Sounds like something nasty. But really, of course, mainly it's Aristarchus Plateau, which is just this incredible geometric trapezoidal looking feature. That, in, you know, encases this very particular sinuous rill, Valis, Valis, uh, sorry, um, Schroeder's Valley. And this goes for what, something like 200 to 300 kilometers, this sinuous rill, and with real no notice, with flat, uh, like obviously you can't see it here, but when you see the LRO images or like much higher resolution moon photos, you can really see the detail of Schroeder's Valley, and they're such interesting features that it doesn't look like volcanism necessarily, and it also looks like that the, the feature was carved simultaneously, like instant, not instantaneously, but all at the same time, or at least in the same part of the same event is what I'm trying to say, because it just it looks that way. I mean, nothing more I can say about that. No experiments can be done short of just actually visual observation here. Zero Byte says, think outside the box and not inside the box, as you have been told. Alright, let's move on north of Aristarchus and go up to the right a little bit. We'll, we'll see Copernicus crater very large, 95 kilometers across, I believe, about six miles deep. I'm oh, sorry, six kilometers deep. I do get my miles and kilometers mixed up on stream. I'm kind of, so forgive me if I make any mistakes, definitely correct me. Also, like I said, I'm kind of hesitant about sizes and distances and stuff like that, but if it's correct, then that's about 100 kilometers across, which is fundamentally crazy that we can see it at such a distance in such detail. Also, wonderful patterns of tendrils, Lichtenberg patterns coming off of the center peak, and you can kind of see the walls of Copernicus right here. Also, a very glowy crater, and sometimes um, it is much darker, and you can really see details on it. I have some shots on some old streams. And right under Copernicus, we've got Kepler. All three of these are named after old astronomers from our past, so Johannes Kepler. This is Kepler Crater with a great asteroid shape and interesting striations coming off of it. Copernicus is Nicholas Copernicus, and uh, Aristarchus of Samos was before both of these guys. So I wonder if he's the one who actually discovered Aristarchus Crater Plateau and named it, or they named it after him. Exist and I just came up with that name. The Moon Naming Committee. Alright, going up north through Mari Imbrium. We got the 2x shot in here, it's looking real nice. Sinus Iridum, Bay of Rainbows. Apparently, this is where the Chang E3 lander, the Chinese rover, landed, right around north of Sinus Iridum, this kind of C shaped notch that's carved. This is something like 400 kilometers or more carved right into the side of Mari Imbrium, like, or carved out. Almost looks like a bay, in a way, when you see it from, or like when you see Earth from space, or not, actually that's, I kind of hate that name too, because, you know, I'm just going to get a little pet peeve out there. The idea that space, when I was a kid, I was like, space, oh my god, so, yeah, but the idea of space really is, it starts at the Kármán line, about 65 to 100 kilometers above Earth. And that, to me, I think is really should be called low Earth orbit in general. I think even anything from 100 kilometers to about 5,000 kilometers should be called low Earth orbit because this idea that where things really are in, in terms of distance is just extraordinarily and you know exponentially further away than this idea that you know things go to space and this ubiquitous idea of space, therefore it's far, is not really accurate to me. So. I'm just talking. All right, coming up north. Plato Crater, Mario Frigoris. Look, 
pretty decent looks at the mountain range next to the Plato crater. And that kind of cool marking that, that separates the mountain range, that kind of thin gray line that you see dead center of your screen, that's Vallis Alpis, Alpine Valley. And that extends about 300 kilometers as well. Cuts right through this. Wow, that is a little... That's Ripley. Let's record that. What was that? Probably some atmospherics. Always on the lookout for those, those ripples. Rain Song says it looks like a nudist beach to me. <laughs> Cool, thanks for hanging out, everyone. I appreciate the company. Saturday night ride through Stellar Medium. Right around the Terminator line, you can see a lot of detail with the contrast. Let's get out of record mode and zoom in here for a second. Zero bed says you got a new scope, looking clear. I've had this 11 for, I don't know, a year and a half now. We're just getting good at using it, getting a feel for it, and knowing how to kind of set up the, just that sweet spot between the camera, the mirrorless camera, and the scope is just, uh, I guess I'm getting better at it or more, more familiar with it. But thank you, glad you're enjoying the view. I don't know, I know I talk a lot of, about a lot of stuff and then I drift off in the middle of a sentence. It's just because there's a lot going on trying to read the chat and then focus the moon. And of course, clouds want to mess with me every two seconds or so. Like, uh, I said it and there, there we go. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It's the opposite of what beloved dub dubs. Am I right, people? All right. Uh, I don't know if that was a lunar wave. No, it just looked like a heavy heavy roll of atmospherics. You know, it, it's, it's quite noticeable when it is, the, if you guys have seen the wave or the pulse, it's really sharp, and it definitely comes two at a time. And, uh, you know, again, I'll say it, a lot of people think it's airplane stuff. I, I'm not certain that it is that. I'm almost positive at this point that it's not the camera. I say almost, and that's like a, a very small percentage of doubt back a little bit because I like this part. Yeah, so it's definitely not the camera simply because like I've seen the Jupiter wave and the other ones and Crow stuff and everybody's got different cameras and they all wouldn't be um, aberrating at an angle doing this very particular move. Um, airplanes, yeah, maybe. But again, you know, the idea that uh, especially the Jupiter one where it's crossing at a rate where you can actually see it across the surface of Jupiter is mind-blowing simply because like an airplane trail, as far as I know it, would pass by Jupiter um, in, in the sky almost instantaneously, would move the entire, the, the, any air column or air current would take the entire image of Jupiter and shake it and then just move past. Um, if it were twice, it would happen, it would move the same thing, it would be this very thick column of air that would shift the entire vision because Jupiter, as far as you look at it in the sky, is like a tiny star. I mean, it's very bright, but with the naked eye, it's, it's tiny compared to the moon. So the fact that the wave actually crossed Jupiter's surface at all is an uh, indication that uh, this, this thing is very, very fine and moves at a certain rate. That's all I know about it. I mean, I don't know what it is. Definitely, it could be magnetics or maybe solar dynamics with Earth and the magnetopause. I've also read a lot about like some of the, the pockets of magnetics around Earth that could, you know, create these kind of flux lines, magnetic reconnection lines that are very sharp, and it could be something like that. Yeah, if you check out my channel, um, the featured videos, the Jupiter Wave one, but you can look in the archive, I have a playlist of transits, and I have a playlist of atmospherics, so just check that out, and you can see them real quick. Another really great thing that, uh, that I kind of went back and looked at was that I hadn't done since I did it, which was the stream of the, the solar eclipse last year. I got 81% coverage. It wasn't a full uh, total eclipse down here in Florida, but 
the stream from last year for the solar eclipse is really cool to watch kind of in high speed, kind of skip through it and, and look at the edge of the moon against the sun. Pretty incredible. So I encourage people to go back and check that video out last, uh, I think, August of 2017. Yo, know, what's up, David? ASL? Uh, Astronomy Livestream ALS, I'm sorry. Vision of Scary says, like, gravity wells all around Earth. Yeah, I've seen lots of videos about that where they have these, these little vortices, they call them portals, but uh, that's a, a, lot of, a lot of language, but it, it could be something like that. I think I've, I've lost the view, guys. The mo so funny, as I was talking. All right, I'm gonna take a second and kind of check out what's going on, see if Mars is popping out, or if the moon, or if we got completely clouded out. I'll be back in a moment.
very cool, the cloud moved. I can even see Mars peeking over the trees. So hopefully it just stays clear for the next, I don't know, 30 or so. I'm getting a little tired actually, but I do want to get out Mars for a second. This track's called Wrong Number from Space. I got a call one day. Call from the moon. You said you want to go out tonight. I said, what you wearing? <laughs> no. I'm just going to shut up. <laughs> Let's see what's going on in the chat room. What's up, people? SC Sharks fans, it's BRB, Vision. If you look at all the earthquakes in Hawaii, it, for three days at certain zoom, it makes a perfect diamond. Well, um, Ben Davidson over at Suspicious Observers does some great work on solar dynamics and earthquake activity. And it wouldn't surprise me that, you know, weather patterns and earthquake patterns and all geological events follow a certain type of golden ratio or symmetry fractal. Therefore, you know, geometric hexagons, triangles, squares can happen within, I guess, electric discharge and arcing. Stuff like the hexagon on Saturn, you know, the, the multiple vortexial storms on the poles of Jupiter, for example. Those are definitely, not definitely, those seem to me electrical formations. And simply because, you know, if the human body and nature is based on electricity, and carbon bait, the carbon uh, molecules, carbon atoms, sorry, that you have structures that can actually become geometric based on patterns like that. Like, for example, like snowflakes, you know, these are, these look artificial, but they're really part of nature. So if earthquakes happen in triangular fashion, it could be something related to that electrodynamics. Dr. Ayad says, got you now on a big screen, wow. I know man, like, you, I have this on a 27 inch monitor as a preview window and it's just like, I'm always like in the middle of a sentence and sometimes I'm just like floored by the fact that we got this view. I mean really 250, uh, what is it, 384,000 kilometers away and we're seeing incredible pristine detail. It never ceases to amaze. Zero Bites gonna idle for a bit, need to warm myself. Super cold today. Where are you at, Zero, that it's that cold? Hey, what's up, Sebas? Como se va? What's up there, D Boji? How you doing? Good evening. Good morning, actually. 1.17 a.m. Checking out this moon, and then just waiting for Mars to appear. Or actually, it has appeared, but just a little bit further above the tree line so I can scope in. We've got this wide shot, but then I'm going to zoom into a 2x for Mars. So if some of you were on the stream last night, or if you haven't, you should check out the X on Mars that we caught last night. Like, really cool detail with the pole at the bottom. I'm curious to see what it looks like tonight, if we'll catch the X as well. Soon, five more minutes, ten more minutes. Coming up right here around Tico Crater. Again, that amazing, you know, Tico itself is incredible, but that long kind of like finger smudge, I call it, kind of coming out of Tico to the left goes all the way across. I mean, that must be massive. That's something like 500 to 700 kilometers across um, in length. It just looks like something smudged through the surface, and it's really strange. I looked up research on it, and I don't really explain it, it's always, it, you know, it looks like something could have rolled, like hit maybe, and then rolled, or rolled and then hit, but it doesn't really make sense. It's just a fascinating mark. Oh, zero bites here in Aust Australia? Or Austria? <laughs> Australia, I assume. That's, it's winter there. So it says like minus one centigrade, about with a wind chill that's probably lower. That really is awful. 
I remember those kind of temperatures from being living up north. Can't say I miss it. Hey, yeah, it says yes because I was watching on the mobile the last couple of times. Yeah, I know it comes across on mobile okay, but man, on a big screen you can't you can't beat it. So that says just waking up, happy to find the Moonwatcher team in a clear, clear night. Awesome. Good morning to you. Oh, I'm looking forward to crashing hard tonight. I was already toast. I wasn't even going to stream tonight because I know I want to try it for Mars. The moon and Mars are coming up real close tomorrow at around midnight. And I wasn't going to stream today. And then I was like, man, clear skies. You can't beat it. You just got to take advantage of every, every time. So I mustered up the energy and here we are. Of course, almost two hours later. Astronomy live streams back. What's up, David? We got back and... Keep the clouds away, everybody. We gotta keep it clear for a bit. I'm gonna see where Mars is at. Give me a moment. Yeah, guys, we're guys and gals. We're about five minutes, to, like I said, five ten minutes away. Mars has cleared the first row of trees but it's still like right behind one of these branches and it's still low therefore it's going to have a lot of atmosphere chromatic aberration on it hey what's up there keith don't have ears on but it's <laughs> i don't have my ears on tonight <clears throat> but it's a good night for astronomy looking good on this side as always some active air with us but at least no clouds yeah man tonight is just a gorgeous night I hope that everybody's got their scope or their binoculars out. I'm glad you guys finally got some clear skies. You went on the stream, I, I didn't see any notification pop up. Or wait, did I? Nope. Yeah, I'm talking a lot tonight, I realize. I know, I'm just like, tell me to shut up, really. <laughs> Zero bites says snow about to come and I'm about 40 kilometers away from the snow field, so I'm not looking forward to when it really sets in. Yeah, man. It sucks, I'm sorry. Hope you warm up soon. Get some some nice drinks. Warm that core. D says, well, Keith is cheating on his channel again. <laughs> Take my space is everybody's mistress. <laughs> Sneak out late at night. Pop in for a quick, quick nightcap. All right, travel one more time around the moon, and then we're gonna switch over to Mars. All right, let's find some some track right here badass moon tunes how about that oh did i play that already i can't tell let me maybe i'll play something off of captain of the stars oh, actually this, this track is cool yeah let's start with this and then i'll get to some captain when we get to mars Tatis. And then top left of your screen is Mari Serenitatis, Sea of Serenity, Sea of Tranquility, and then Mari Fecunditatis. Or is it Nectaris? Let me check that. Sea of Nectar. 
I always get it confused for fecunditatis, which is on the other side. Hey, what's up there, Tana? One star and two cats. How are the two cats doing? Are they bouncing to some Luna tunes? Hey, Ad says we've been bewitched by the moon. He says, hey, be a the stream in the window just in case I'm to cross <laughs> reference anything weird. <laughs> yeah, you know, the weirdness happens. Astronomy Livestream says, first time I videotaped Mars was in 86. Man, you got the best stories, no doubt. You were there when all these cool things happened that I wish I'd seen. <laughs> so please share your stories about Mars. I mean, uh, what, what were you filming on and uh, what camera and what scope? And uh, was Mars like different than it is today? Cause like, I'm sorry, I'm using like a lot, but uh, is it, uh, yeah, I'd love to know the difference. And I'm kind of jealous of everybody who got to see Saturn kind of shift its ring position over the last 20 years. So people who are doing like astrophotography in the 80s and 90s were just, they had some really killer views. Um, and one final question, I know I just inundated you, but what about, uh, did you ever, did you see the, um, the Shoemaker-Levy comet hit Jupiter at all? Yo, hey, what's up, somebody one special? How you doing? Alright, I think, I think it's Mar Martian, Martian time. And then I'm gonna let this track play. Let's do it.
when Serna Two Cat says, "Wow, never seen it before." Um, where is it in comparison to her son right now? So, two answers to that. I would definitely recommend pulling up, you know, either an interactive Mars map and Stellarium, or a similar type of application that will show you like where it is and you know respect in regard to you and the ecliptic. The other thing I'll say is it's likely, and it seems, that the sun is at the bottom left corner, illuminating from the bottom. So this is now coming up at a, like 12 degrees in the eastern skies, southeast, a little bit southeast. And uh, yeah, so the sun would be right behind it, I mean, like six hours from now. Similarly with the moon, the Terminator line is at the top right corner, so you can see the waning Mars right here. Also cool that we have the X again tonight. Bottom right corner is one of the pole ice caps, polar ice caps, and then what was I going to say? So yeah, so Mars is in phase right now, obviously not 100% illuminated, so you're getting a kind of Terminator line across Mars, similar to the, the, the Terminator line you're getting across the moon. Uh, so ALS, David just responded to me about the Mars question from the 8th from 86. It says he was using a C14, 14 inch telescope, uh, VHS and beta tape, nice. Panasonic D5000 quarter inch sensor, 640 by 480 res. Man, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. I'm gonna kind of, I'll check the stream out and kind of look up, look up those, that gear tomorrow or later, probably tomorrow. That's cool. Um, any any particular observations or details that you saw that are that are different than what we're looking at right here? Because it would be very interesting to know like what Mars looked like 20 years ago. I mean, there are some pictures definitely, but amateur stuff is very hard to find. going to get even better actually because it was just behind a tree branch so as long as it moves up a little bit more it seems like it's going to be clear too which is radical last cigarette of the night for me i'm out so i had a cigarette but i think i'm going to run for another 10 15 more minutes maybe Depends how I feel, but that's about the plan right now. It's called the past is the nast. Let's rock. Spaceship Earth, now we're lost in time. I'm coming to you, baby. S in light and S in mine. I told it to you, baby. Wishing night and wishing night. Seen through the cosmic. Burning the wall of space. A broken X and a broken Y. Altitude sin is broken X and a broken lie. Brutal views of holy motion shine so through the causes of self modified GMO. Watch your spider bugs pull you out to the left side.
thanks for all the kind comments about the music. I really appreciate that. I mean, that's a big part of this for me. So thank you. Um, Zerobi says the skylive.com is cool. And that was, yeah, that was a track that was Passes the Mass. Let's see what we got here. Um, this is called Flip It for the Edge. This is off the Calling My Mind album. Riding a little bit longer on Mars right here, thinking about the eight inch going to the moon for a little bit. Maybe, maybe. Definitely some cool views of Mars. A little, lots of chromatic going on, and chromatic aberration happening right now. Sebas says, TBS isn't only Moonstream, it's Chris Mojo. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you, thank you. Oh, damn. D. Brogy says, I drank my Snapple iced tea lemonade vodka way too fast. All of that sounds delicious, and now I just got dry mouth thinking about it. I probably need a drink as well. Flip it, flip it for the edge. Sing it over song. says to tell the truth it was a digital to analog camera and get better 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 a better video image compared to the cameras of today same with Jupiter that's interesting I, I'm definitely I've never been able to, I've not never been able to but I don't have the gear to, to try any of that old stuff I thought about it one day of going back and getting some retro VHS camera stuff and seeing what that looks like on the scope it's kind of pricey right now, but that sounds really cool. I'd love to do some research on it. set that up real quick and if I can see the moon I'll switch back over for a second for a last leg of this 141 a.m. thanks for hanging out with me I appreciate everybody sharing in this space journey songs lined up. I got Catch, Light of the Moon, Feeling Special, and Golden coming up for y'all. I'm stepping away from the keyboard for a second, gonna set up the scope. I'll be a BRB, guys, gals. What's up, Decorating Memories? Haven't seen you here before. Welcome to the stream. Unless you had a different username before. All right, so we're just checking out some Mars, and I'm gonna set up the 8-inch for the moon. All right. Cool. 
So too, the guitar is a little low, isn't it? Let's bump that up a touch. That's a bit better, I think. All right. Center that Luna. Go for a couple of tunes. All right. Skull White Wizard. I'm pulling myself back. Made up, my dear. 
Spend a lot of time in my mind Hold up Mysterious situations come to you But I turn up my gills And step into the surface Oh, white wizard Into the black lands you drain Fly, young soldier Cast all those shadows away Go, wild wizard Into the darkness you drain Fly, young blue heart In the hopes of the shadows vibrate Keep on pulling myself back From the edge But I've got nothing real to say for myself But I'm sorry Oh man, I'm not sorry But I got nothing new to say for myself But I'm sorry Oh babe, I'm not really sorry I keep on pulling you back and back From the edge But you got nothing new to say for yourself Now you're sorry oh, Girl, you're not really sorry Into the black lands we drain Fly, young blue heart And cast all those shadows away Go, wild wizard Into the darkness you drain Fly, young soldier In the hopes of the shadows vibrate Trying to sing quietly, it was a little bit late. A little less belting, a little more whisper. Petit plus de verb. C and some on the guitar, perhaps. A little amplifier reverb, maybe. All right, let's try this one. And then the person. That's overhead.
So silly, wow. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know, just being creative. So just riding it through, I don't know, I got another spurt, a little bit of energy, spurt, spurt of energy.
don't twist my heart So 
how's it going? so wobbly when you move around compared to the 11. It's like shaky shaky. All right, moving down one more time around on Mar Nectaris and Tranquility. Tranquility Bass. Are we reaching Tranquility Bass? Let's see, what do we got? What do we got? <laughs>
And I was young I had no body find my body before I was born Sees the footprints on walls, footprints on walls. I haven't seen a footprint. Telescope eyes diminished, neutralized. I have to see stars. I have to see stars from the surface. But don't you know that Neil never saw stars? Birds never saw stars from the surface You know Jean never saw stars Jean's never saw stars from the surface But don't you know there's sour puss when you Land after round trip world to you. Come back and survive ultimately to live a lie. To live and die. Keeping something so Just have a good weekend It's nice to see you go Just have a nice weekend Nice to see you go Nice, nice to see you When this is the final song Quick little shot Let's hit that record button Final shot at Luna pour ce soir, pour le demain. <laughs> hey, thanks y'all, I appreciate it. <clears throat> All right. It's just verse, chorus, not even chorus, it's just verse, but I like this one. Uh, if I can remember. Yeah. Give to 
all y'all hanging out for so long checking out great views um, well I think they're great views I know y'all send me all these compliments so I think you also think they're great views so tonight was good Mars good Saturn like the X on Mars and uh, if you guys didn't catch Saturn it was at the beginning of the stream that was at like uh, really zoomed in and at one point it really gets clear so I enjoyed that Luna is about to descend right here. I'm going to turn off the tracking and let it go off screen. Play you guys one more track to go. Captain, and I'll have a quick smoke. Last one for the night. Everyone have a great day tomorrow. Enjoy your Saturday. Captain signing out. Peace and love, y'all. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, Dr. Hayad. Vision. Sebas, Astronomy Livestream, David, Paps, D, and everyone else who joined. I can't see you right now, but take care. Peace out.